Making snow is a little bit like baking. If your measurements are off or you forget an ingredient, you get more of a mess than a meal. Our first attempt to film the snowmaking process didn't pan out. It was cold enough, but something was missing. Or more accurately, we had a little too much of something. So we went back. This time, we got what we came for. A tiny atmospheric tweak that led to this. The main ingredients are pretty easy to understand. Water delivered to snow guns by a 450 horsepower pump. Compressed air that helps scatter tiny water droplets into the freezing air. Once you reach that point, you'd think the air does the rest, and it does, sometimes. Tom Matalavage is the director of mountain operations at Tussie Mountain. He's going to help us out from here. We look a lot at the wet bulb, and that's kind of a combination of humidity and air temperature, and that's kind of our key. Really optimal snowmaking conditions for us start when we get down around 20 degrees with a real low dew point. We can make snow up as high as, say, 28, 29 degrees, as long as the dew points are low enough, but the production is low. If you look up wet bulb temperature, it can get confusing, but think of it this way. It's why you feel cold after you get out of the shower. Water evaporates, cooling your skin. The same thing is happening to the tiny water droplets flying out of these guns. Drier air leads to more evaporation. More evaporation means the water that's left can actually get colder than the air. But dry days in the Northeast are no guarantee. Paul Head is a meteorologist with the National Weather Service. He has more than four decades of experience. That's a problem in the East. Uh, because uh, ski areas don't have the ability to make snow all the time like they do on the western states where the air is naturally dry. In the east, we have a lot of changes in our humidity. And those changes mean trade-offs. Higher humidity days need more water and more air to make less snow. It also takes more time. I kind of consider that snowflake's kind of like an egg, and the shell freezes, but inside the egg is still wet. And if you can make that kind of snow, then you have to let it sit on the ground and undisturbed until the whole shell becomes hard. Then you can groom it out and push it around and have good skiing on it. But if you go out and, and touch that snow with grooming or skiing right off the bat, it'll just turn to ice. Man-made snow has its advantages. It's easier to groom and doesn't melt as fast. Matt Lavage says that's because it's more dense than natural snow. There's a much higher water content to man-made snow. Natural snow may be 12 to 1, 15 to 1. It's inches to, of snow to an inch of rain, where man-made snow is about a 4 to 1 ratio. So for every 4 inches of snow, you have an inch of what would be an inch of water. With recent upgrades, snowmaking at a place like Tussie Mountain is more efficient than ever. Any of these little blue squares are where we have automated guns on the mountain. I can start it and shut it down. I can set my snow quality. These guns constantly are in adjustment. So once it's up and running, it sends that data down to the computer. But there isn't much you can do when nature gives you 60 degree days in February. I've been doing it for a long time, so I must not hate it. But it's a long season. A year like this kind of wears on you because you just get everything in great shape and the weather comes around and turns it all around again. So if you have snow on the mountain, enjoy it. Because like all good recipes, once you make it, it tends to disappear. <laughs>